Hey, welcome to Three Pastors and a Mike podcast. I am Pastor Bartlett Singer, along with my colleagues, Pastor Skip Moshek, Pastor Scott Weatherford, and just riffing on whatever it is Skip brings up. So we have the time. Yeah, to... Skip, you got a bee in your bonnet. What's going on? Well, okay, let me tell you what happened this week, right. or last week, maybe last week. Okay, I won't go into details. Everybody do your research. Go look up these clips, and you can see for yourself. And if you disagree with what we say, please comment below. We can get into a huge... Or just keep it to yourself. I mean, really. No, I'd rather you comment. I'd rather comment. We can get into a big old fight with you. It'd be fine. But here's what happened. Always fun. There is a men's conference that is evidently held... I don't know how many they've had, three or four, in Missouri. Springfield. Springfield, Missouri. And it's done at an arena there. It's not at a church. It's hosted at uh, like a sports arena there. And it's put on by a local church. And I think it's very well attended. I think they have like, you know, five, 6,000 men there or something. But they, it, it was last week, and they had guest speakers. If you've ever been to church conferences, you know, they bring in big national known or international known pastors and speakers. They give talks, and then they break that up with breakout sessions, et cetera, et cetera. If you don't know how conferences work, you can go look that up too. But they... Uh, this conference is known for its outlandish sensationalism, yeah. sensationalism and entertainment. Yes. Part one of our podcast, <laughs> which is this one, is this year one of their speakers was a pastor named Mark Driscoll. Go look him up. It'll take. Go look him up and talk to me in August when you're done looking him up. Well, then you can look at Christianity Today's series of podcasts about the rise and fall of Mars Hill. Rise and fall of Mars yeah. Hill. He was a pastor that in Seattle. Podcast. Yes, he was a pastor in Seattle. A lot of controversy. And he's very <laughs> controversial. The understatement of the year. He's very controversial. He now pastors a church in Scottsdale, yeah. Arizona. That's a big church because I've seen him in person twice. I've shook his hand, met him. You've met him. Mm-hmm. He is an unbelievable speaker in person. Gifted, guy can, gifted brilliant He guy. can hold a room. He's really good. Uh, very to get him bar fight, you want him on your side. Very manly, speaks on men's issues. And you can see why a conference at some point would have wanted him to come and speak. Well, especially a men's but conference. having said all that stuff, he's been, he's very notorious and done some kind of, kind of questionable things. And they, he got asked to leave that church in Seattle because of his leadership things and, uh, we won't go on all that. Look all that up. But he's a speaker at this conference. One of the speakers. Yeah. One of the speakers. Mm-hmm. Well, the video is out. This conference opens up on a Friday, and it oh, <laughs> it opens up with all these men coming to be spiritually fulfilled in men's ministry. And this guy jumps on the stage. Lights, smoke, smoke camera, fire, and all fire, fire, fire. fire. There's this. He's wearing like a sleeveless vest. And a 40-foot pole. And there's a pole on the stage, okay, at a men's conference. This guy jumps up and the music starts playing. Well, he takes his vest off, so he's shirtless. Starts dancing around the pole. Wearing spandex. Okay. Spandex. Bart's got a problem with spandex. But I wear it because it's the only thing that fits now. But he's dancing around this pole, and he has a sword. It gets better. Okay. He then is shirtless at a men's conference and there's a poll i keep saying that because i need you to understand this is a men's conference well there's guy, guy, there's 50 year old guys with caps and glasses that just want to mow their lawn on saturday having to watch this okay they're going what we're looking forward to mowing our lawn yes, yes. It, and they're going what? that boy right okay <laughs> But it is in Missouri. It's in Missouri. So is then the guy, person? then the guy proceeds to swallow the sword. Yes. Okay. All the way down, very dramatically. You may be perforating his colon. Okay. Down, yeah. And while he's the sword is swallowed, he jumps up on the pole, and climbs, and like does the thirty sword. feet in the air, and with the sword down his throat. And it's incredibly, uh, unbelievably athletic. Okay, I can say I can appreciate that. <laughs> well, what what uh, the heck did that have to do with the okay. man's conference? So, <laughs> He's done. Well, it's a strong man's conference. I mean, they're showing the man that's strong. Yes. I, I There's see, nothing that okay. says manly strength like okay. climbing 40 clip. foot on a pole. Having said, no, sword down your having having said all, all of that. Nothing manly about okay. this whatsoever. Having said all of that. And then he rescues a kitten at the top of the that's, pole. There you go. In a fireman's outfit. Yes. Oh, never mind. That's the village that's people. people yeah. That's the village people. Uh, having said all of that. What? What? 
<laughs> if I was sitting there, I'd go, what did I just... What is this? I would I'm love a, to have been in the creative meeting well, that came back. Did I? Did I wake up in? Am I on? Am I taking crazy pills? <laughs> Here, that, like, here's, here's my question. That like I live with Scott said exactly. Okay. I have never seen that. I have no idea who this guy was until we I saw the video clip. I want to know. And you cannot see it. And you cannot see it after you see it. But the guys in the meeting, if, if one of you brought this to me and said, "Hey, I think this would be good for church." My first question would be, what are you watching that you came across this guy? Yeah, how did you find How him? did you find let's, this guy? Let's have a conversation with the HR now. Look at your computer history. That's a good shit. <laughs> well, okay, remind me to not show you what the creative ideas I had for fall. No, okay. we played. no I'm kidding. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, uh, if you do any research, this guy is kind of a Russian immigrant guy who was on Britain's Got Talent who did this routine and won. I don't know what he won. I don't watch Britain's Got Talent. No, you don't. But he won something. So he's famous for that. If you look up his bio, okay, which I did for research on you, so (laughs) put away your smart (laughs) comments. I did this for research for three pastors and a mic. And then I dumped you burn the computer afterwards. Then I burn the computer yeah. and drop to your knees and beg for forgiveness. Don't alcohol, <laughs> uh, what you call it, all that. So washed it, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, yeah. and drank it. He <laughs> said, "Here's his bio. While not winning on Britain's Got Talent, Yakshimov, whatever his name is, <laughs> Yakshimov Smirnov, uh, Smirnov, yeah. lives more of an X-rated lifestyle. Oh, perfect. Bile by." Being a male, I think miles. Yeah, uh, true. Sorry, that's what's coming up in my throat. (laughs) By being a male stripper for same-sex nightclubs in Las Vegas and Los Angeles, blah blah blah. So he is a either what this guy may have turned his whole life over to Christ, and I don't know about. Well, more power to you. Okay, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. At some point in his life, did this. For the love. I don't care if he's wearing a robe and baptizing thousands. Yet don't put the man on a pole with a sword and shirtless at a men's conference, okay? Now, having said all of that. I'll write that down. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Having said all that, that's what they did to open this conference, Mm -hmm. okay? Unbelievable. That that would happen. That and, and I can't believe half that crowd didn't get up and walk out. First of all, because I would have, you would have, I know you would have. We would have gone. No, I, what I, did we just do? Well, you know, I hope I'm letting you. You say that, but I think it was. I mean, watching the video is like it's like a train wreck. I mean, you're sitting there. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like you're just sitting there watching. It's like, am I really witnessing what I'm witnessing? Yeah, and um, because it's not because trust me when I tell you we're describing it and we're laughing and all that kind of stuff. When you watch it. It's one, Cirque du Soleil is one thing, and you watch these guys do this stuff, and you're like, God, oh, that's amazing, then whatever. Trust me when I tell you, if you watch what this guy did, it, it is 100% male stripper vibes that you get off this. There's no other way to describe yeah. well, it. Well, I'm not very familiar with those vibes. So well, I'm neither am I. I've been it. told <laughs> that it is that it is okay, 100%. Slope, gentlemen. Okay? Slope. It is 100% that. Uh, anyway... That happens on a Friday when it opens. Well, they have a Friday night speaker. They do this. They come in Saturday morning, and the first guy up is Mark Driscoll, Pastor Mark Driscoll. Well, when you go to speak at a conference, typically the guest speakers come to the whole conference. Yeah, tip, yeah, because they get paid. Yeah, and, and they, you want to, you know, I've done. You want to feel like you're part of it, and you want to yeah. kind of catch the vibe. What's going on? What are the people like? Because that who, totally. To whom am I speaking? That's yeah. exactly right. Because you're going to tailor your to thing. the crowd, right? That's a, and very few times, maybe if they had a politician, or maybe if they have some hyper celebrity, would they fly in, go do their session? The fly and, out. and that may happen, but that's not what happened here. So Mark Driscoll walks up. He sees all this the night before. He's there the night before. He's up at 1 o'clock in the morning praying for them. He's talking and having dinner with the guy that puts this thing on. He's seen the whole thing on Friday. Well, he comes up, and he starts his thing off by saying his 
uh, his part, he says, I want to be very careful about how I do this. And he kneels on the stage on one knee and says, sorry if my voice is hoarse. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, uh, paraphrasing. paraphrasing this you need to go watch it i promise you you do so so you don't you're not hinging on what i'm saying but he said my voice is hoarse because i've been up since four in the morning uh, i've what been up, up till the morning yeah praying for all of you because i feel like the spirit of jezebel he says it some kind of way but it basically a demonic presence has been over this men's conference and it started yesterday with that opening act okay which Probably everything that he just said right there, what he said, I probably would agree with him and go like like it was so ridiculous, right? And he calls this out and he goes, he goes, there was a pole. Uh, this is a high place. God doesn't. Said, yeah, sure, it's all, sure. He calls it yeah. this and this and this. And I'm wondering why he's using all these words because he normally doesn't do this, but I'll tell you why in a minute. So anyway, he calls it. Well, the guy that put the conference on is sitting in the front row and you can hear him yelling, that's enough, Mark. You're done. That's enough. And then he goes, you're done. And then Mark Driscoll says, I'll receive that. Thank you. And he packs his book up and leaves. Doesn't do his deal. And boos. It's high drama at a men's conference. You can't tell if they were booing Mark or if they were first booing the the guy for taking him off. I mean, so it was, kind of, it was very mixed reaction. Very weird. It, it, some very weird some footage. It was awkward. Yes. Yeah, very awkward. Well, it turns into this big old thing. Well, later in the conference... He has Mark come back on. They apologize to each other, and they talk it all out. Here's my question to you, because when the pastor jumped up on the stage after he kicked him off, he said, "He's everybody's yelling and screaming, <clears throat> and he says, no, 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 Matthew 18, Matthew 18, you go to the person, you go to the person in private, he, and then he, he had he all the choices to do you know, He goes, I met with him for an hour last night, we met 30 minutes this morning. He never once said anything about this, about having a problem with this, and just came up there, blah, 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 blah. So here's my question to you. All of what happened, many things, it's one thing I learned in ministry over the last quarter of a century. Many things can be true at the same time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that correct? Yeah. The person who put that, entertainer on there should be fired immediately that should never have been allowed to happen idiotic right if that pastor made that decision he shouldn't be allowed to put on a men's conference ever again idiotic go back and look at what they've done in some previous men's conferences we'll talk about that in part two but uh then at the same time mark driscoll comes up there with all the chances in the world beforehand to have not spoken, and to just, said, I got, I can't to do go, this. hey, I, that's ridiculous. I can't be a part of this. He could have done that that night. He could have done that 20 minutes after the guy went off the deal. Didn't say a word. Comes out, does that kneeling on the stage. And I'm, the reason I'm telling you this is because I know the past of Martin Driscoll. And let me tell you something. He's a snaky dude, okay? He's awesome to listen to and all that. It has been proven, a bunch of stuff that he has done, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, that I found out. What did you find out? His new book, talking about the influence of demons and the demonic on churches and Christian events, just dropped the day or two before this event. And it got set in his lap to be able to promo this thing by grandstanding about well, what did I, yeah. I had never heard that spirit of Jezebel oh, I've heard it. phrase before until, Let me, until he said uh, it. This is, this is something that's not new at all. And you hear you hear a lot about the spirit of Jezebel, spirit of Jezebel. And the, the problem with the spirit of Jezebel, Jezebel died and went to hell. Jezebel was just some well, she wicked, was a wicked, wicked woman. woman in the, a and, queen. And so, but we talk name, about Jezebel. in Mark's new book, which I'm probably going to buy and read it, because he talks about old... Old demons have become new and resurrected, like the Asherah of Paul and Jezebel. Her name meant Bride of Bell. That's what it Bride means. Of, yeah. And Bell is a false god. In fact, there was Asherah B-A-A-L, right? Asherah and Bell, male yeah, and female yeah. gods that the Canaanites worshipped, that yep. the, the Sennonites worshipped, and it was a sex cult is what it was. Yep. They would gather in front of a phallic symbol. If you don't know what that is, you can explain that to us. Yep. But uh, And they would... 
They would worship their false god by having sex, uh, same sex, heterosexual, homosexual, bestiality, agoraphobic, anything you want to imagine, they were doing that, and that was their form of worship. Now, what the spirit of Jezebel, which you hear a lot in the last probably 100 years, it wasn't around before this because it's not the Bible, was that manifestation of a demonic presence usually manifest, get this, in a woman as opposed to a man. And what he was, Driscoll was saying, already said, there's a Jezebel spirit. Well, that's a, that's an interesting title. Was there a spirit, a salacious spirit in the room? Uh, yeah. Was there a an appropriate spirit in the room? Yeah. Was there a spirit of division and disunity in the room? Yeah. You got a Russian male stripper on a, a pole. Is that an assured pole? No, that's a pole. Was he swallowing the sword symbolic of something else? Probably, maybe not. Uh, who knows? But whatever it was, it was totally inappropriate. Totally inappropriate. And so is it a Jezebel spirit? I don't know, but I'll tell you something. It may not be Jezebel or Jezebel. The devil was involved in it yeah. because he was creating division. My point is he used that verse, and that's what he opens his book with. So he purposely is... What I'm saying is Driscoll grandstanded and used that moment Let me, to call them out and and is at the same time as that conference was so wrong for doing all that kind of stuff, Driscoll is so wrong for doing it the way that he did it. And let me ask you this question, because here's my question, and y'all didn't talk all mm. amongst yourselves, is... That guy got up on the stage and said, Matthew 18, go to the person. And I know when you have conflict one-on-one, you need to go to that. It obvious, the, the, we talk about this all the time. The line, it's very clear on the process of doing that. When you're in a group like that, Driscoll calls it out in front of all these people, and now it's worldwide and on the internet. It reminded me of people on Facebook and social media calling oh, wow. something out that they don't know anything about. Where is the biblical, where do you, where is Matthew 18 in that order in when you feel like you need to call out a movement or you need to call out what is biblically correct, especially when you don't know all the details about said movement, or in this case, the whole thing was a pot of, of hooey, messed up, and Driscoll was wrong. For doing it the way he did it, and that whole conference was wrong for putting it on the way they did. It was a fiasco from beginning to end, and it's a good lesson to us, I think, to talk about how to correctly and biblically rebuke something, deal with that. First of all, let me say this, okay? Hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah. When you look back on something, you say, "Well, I should have done this. I could have done this. Could have done this." I want to defend Driscoll for a second. Driscoll had been writing a book um, on these ancient demons. It was in his reticular activating system in his brain. It was on his brain. Yep. Everything he sees then, because he's been immersed in this world, he sees this here, 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 here. Yep. So it's a de- demon behind every Pretty bush. Yeah. And he, was, he sees this. So he sees an opportunity that's already in his brain that this is obviously not right. And so he takes a public spectacle. Instead of dealing with it privately with a leader, he deals with it publicly for perhaps his advantage. Now, here's one thing, Skip, I've discovered. I don't know Driscoll's motives. I don't know my, my motives most of the time. So who am I to judge his motives? But I am saying, okay, is there a biblical precedent? Let me throw this out, okay? We talk about Matthew 18. It says, if your brother sins against you, go to him in private. This has nothing to do with that, the brother sitting in the church. Don't that. That's a it's one. Out of contact. That's a one on one thing. That's like if this your is brother totally posts something negative on Facebook, you call your brother up and say, dude, what are you doing? Uh-huh. This is not true. That's right. You and I have both been victim of that. You know, I've had so. some very public, negative, untrue things said about me that have been very wound, wounding mm-hmm. and hurtful in, in recent days. Just complete ball faced lies that have been propagated as truth. And I have a reaction, okay? Do I do I do this publicly because I've been shamed publicly, or there's Titus three ten, which says warn a device a person once, warn them the second time. After that, have nothing to do with them for their self condemned and warped. So perhaps Driscoll, maybe, and you know, if Mark hears this, he has his opinion, whatever. Maybe 
hindsight being 2020, he should have said, yeah, I'm not going to speak. And I will kill my brother said, look, that's a load of junk. I ain't have anything to do with it. I'm out. You've got now a hole to fill. One of your other guys can step up and speak for me. And you can say Mark wasn't comfortable with what he saw, and therefore he left. And then maybe they could have worked it out behind the scenes. But obviously they got together, worked it out, and then Mark talked anyway. Uh Weird, weird stuff. Now, was he self-promoting? Eh, he's got a history of it. Okay. Uh, Is his motives pure? Ah, we don't know his motives because we don't know our own. So we need to judge that. Should we give him grace and understanding until the point where it becomes obvious he's self-condemned and warped. Now, when does that become? I don't know. I'm not in the circle of influence with him. I, I, he doesn't hold me accountable. I don't hold him accountable. Uh, I have a choice to make whether or not to let him influence me or not. I do. But let's circle back to Facebook. How many times do very good people get blasted over the ignorance of somebody making an assumption mm-hmm. about something. Yep, happens all the time. And, and you see it, and that's where social media is so damaging mm-hmm. because stupid becomes front and center. And we'll talk about that in part two, how stupid becomes front and center and how being sensational or salacious becomes a part of our cultural expression, even within the church family, which is sad to a watching world. Now, if I'm a man at this conference, I'm sorry to dominate. No, no. If I'm a man at this conference, I'm Bubba from, you know, the, yeah. the hills of Oak Iowa. Well, Corn fields of Iowa. Well, it's actually, he's in Missouri, and it's the it's the hillbillies. Oh, no, but I'm saying they probably drew men from all Oh, it area. did. They have 5,000 men there. It was right. a huge draw. And I'm sitting there, and I'm watching this. I'm thinking, okay, I'm out. I'm not going to celebrate it. Because what are they going to do next year to top what they got done this year? That's what we're going to talk about in part two. Part two. All right. Uh, where's my discerning spirit say, I need to stand up against this, or I just need to get away from it? That's the Titus. Yeah. And the thing is, my daddy told me this a long time ago, he said, son, a bulldog whoop a skunk, but it ain't worth it. Mm-hmm. And there's sometimes we wade ourselves into battles that we are not supposed to fight. The Lord's to fight the battles. Who's who's this pastor who did this conference accountable to. Uh-huh. They need to deal with him, not me. Uh-huh. I don't have any accountability over it. Uh, who does Mark Driscoll need to answer to? It ain't me. So I need to keep my pie hole shut uh-huh. and let whoever is, and then they may think it's fine. You know what? I don't have a dog in this fight. So I need to stay in my lane and behave myself. Now, if I were the pastor, different story. <laughs> different story. If I'm accountable for this group of men gathered there, different story. If I'm a speaker at the event, different story. Now, there's a couple of things I'll throw out to you. Okay? Think about this. You think about this. He's invited to speak. He's getting paid. If I don't speak, I don't get paid. Mama's back at the house, dependent on me to get paid, so she can buy some new shoes or whatever, pay groceries, da da da. And I'm backing out because of this. I don't know. That may be the motivation. I'm going to go ahead and go through with this because I'm going to get paid. And sometimes we could sell our souls to the devil and become a participant in his diabolical schemes because we're trusting in the hand of man Mm -hmm. instead of the hand of God. Well, and that brings up another good point because because I know the history of Driscoll Mm -hmm. and his reputation, and because now I've looked up a little bit about this men's conference and about it uses the sensationalism, which we'll talk about in part two, it makes me mentally go to places like that, and and therefore, because I'm human, I go, what were the motives? Because let me tell you, another thing that popped into my mind is Driscoll, is, because of his past, is very controversial, okay? So if you're going to do a men's conference, and you're going, man, we rented this arena. We got to sell some tickets. We got to make a profit, blah, blah. Well, let's. Who can we get that's going to bring a bunch of people in? Well, let's get somebody controversial. Let's get Driscoll. Let's get Driscoll. Well, he's going to bring a whole load of people in. So therefore, they bring him in because he's controversial. Well, then now that puts that back on Driscoll going. Well, they're using me because I'm controversial, so I better be controversial. And so, and on top of it, I got a new book. Well, see, to me, this whole thing, and we talk about this. You know, we grew up watching (laughs) Dirty. We grew up watching wrestling, Skip. We were talking about this. Is that there's in wrestling, there's a thing, it's a term is called shoot and the word. A shoot 
is something that just happens spontaneously. It's not scripted. It doesn't go as planned. It just happens. A work is when everything is planned out. And the way this whole thing went to me, okay, you have the thing. I thought it was re- interesting you, when you said that. You bring in Dreskel. You know most of the time I got be. the most jaded opinion, but Barb. But I'm the first one that has. Yeah, for once I'm the most jaded one in this room. <laughs> the, the Driscoll comes in and see everybody that has seen it. You see Driscoll, then you see the guy basically run him off stage, come out, start quoting Matthew 18. He kind of gets booed. Then he talks a little bit. So it could have been a yeah, WWE, and, and, but, right? But so many and so many it's very and, WWE. And that's where and that's where it all <laughs> and that's where it all ends. I mean, that's a for J. Most people end it there. Most commentators end it there. What most don't play, but we've seen, yeah. is that later on in the conference, the guy that does the conference and Driscoll come out, and it's a kumbaya session, and they apologize to each other. And Driscoll speaks, and they, and they work through, it. and then Driscoll gets to speak. Oh my! And does his whole body. And you get, well, here's the other thing, though. Okay, let's just say that before, and there's the old saying. I, feel like I, I gotta eat a tin hat. All you probably do. Um, it's a work. <laughs> it's a, it's a work. It's not a shoot. It's a work. But I want you to think about this, and this is I have a, my background before ministry is communications, and there's an old saying that no publicity is bad publicity if you know how to spin it right. How many of us had ever heard of this conference, heard of this pastor, do anything about this thing in Missouri? I didn't. I didn't. And we, and we, I, I know the church. We run. I, I, know, the, we, I know of the yeah, pastor. You knew the church, right? I knew we, about Driscoll. I and, and we knew about Driscoll. Oh, I, that is we it. run in this world. And we had no idea or weren't even aware now of this big conference. Too. And now we do. And I've seen and things now, I didn't need to see. That's exactly it. <laughs> and now we're, we've are we spent this half hour of podcast, part one, talking about it. Yes. Along with many other pastors, yeah. many other commentators across the country. They could have achieved exactly That's exactly. What they I mean, to do in so. all reality, we could now be part of their diabolical scheme. Okay, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Okay. <laughs> and, that is, and that is very genuine. That is but, very, but that is, a, but I would really say that's about a 33.3 possibility okay let happened. me let me say this yeah. about all of that and i think you in guys, conclusion you, you guys are very one. very thoughtful and you you thought through your your hypotheses of what possibly could happen but i do want to say this okay i know the church in springfield and they're doing a very effective job of discipling men and seeing people come to christ mm-hmm. i know mark driscoll has his story mm-hmm. but you know God's used Mark Driscoll on a lot of people's lives. Absolutely. And he's yes. come to, many people have come to Christ, and he's been a servant of God. Now, whether he's controversial or not, which he is, that's, that's between him and God, not between him and me. Mm-hmm. So what I have to do as a believer, what I need to do is to think the best, believe the best, hope the best, and then say, okay, am I going to let this affect my walk with Jesus? Am I going to pattern the ministry we do after this, or I'm going to do something else. And I'm going to tell you in part two, a story that I experienced that was very powerful to me about this whole sensational thing that we can get caught up in as communicators and pastors. We got to remember this. There's one star. It's King Jesus. And we are nothing but blips on the map of human history where King Jesus reigns supreme and our goal is to not make ourselves famous, sell our books, speak at our conferences, do those things, is to make Jesus famous. Now, and that sounds very grandiose to me, and you guys sitting at this table know that I've got the ego the size of Texas. Mm-hmm. But we 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 try, especially we all have backgrounds yeah. in performing and yeah. doing whatever, and we've seen it work. We try to, it's very easy to try to manipulate emotion and manipulate the mood of the room and the minute because there's ways to do that you know yeah, and, and probably a russian stripper without a shirt on swallowing swords on a 40 foot pole should have been thought through mm-hmm. you know what happens next year yeah yeah what <laughs> what what happens that next that year? is that's part 2 that is part 2 but anyway going in conclusion again did driscoll follow the biblical procedure and calling them out. How was that all handled? Well, the whole thing was a fiasco. 